Okay, look at this. There's a the hollow I'm zooming in on right now in the tree. That's an Indian miner hollow. Now, not you know, this hollow could have been used for another native Australian parrot or bird, but unfortunately it's being used by an Indian miner. Now Indian miners aren't the best for the Australian environment. They're not very good at all, but because well, what they do is they, they still nest or they, they chase out the other birds living in the hollows, um, which may already have a nest there. They chase them out and then they go into the hollow and they build their nest in it and they take up all the surrounding hollows so that by the end of it, you know, there's no other place for the parrots to nest. They're also a very quick breeding bird, which means it's just a catalyst to take up the surrounding hollows. Oh, look at that. And then there's one tree. We, look at this. Right next to that Indian minor hollow, we have a lorikeet hollow. How incredible. This tree has a magpie lark nest. You know, built out of mud. We have a lorikeet hollow, and we have an a, 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 a Indian miner hollow. The hollow, the, the Indian miner just come out of that hollow. See, and they, Indian miners are very fast breeding birds. And what they do is they take all a lot of the hollows in the surrounding area, and they leave no room for our native birds. Um, not only that, but they can kill a lot of their young when taking the nest. You just saw the Indian miner leave. And he's just down there beside me now. You see that? And then we've got the lorikeets right next to him. Look at that in the same tree. This tree has about three hollows in it. One of them has a lorikeet and one of them has an Indian miner. I can't see the other one, it's on the other side. Look at that, how incredible. And this is why Indian miners are... Uh, now, I'm not saying they're the worst bird in the world to have in the Australian um, in our environment, but I'm saying they, they do do some damage. And um, it does show through um, you know, if you monitor a population of birds that doesn't have an environment, you know, of hollow bearing birds that doesn't have the Indian miner in it or in its environment, then those numbers will stay quite steady. But then you put an Indian miner population in there and their numbers will drop partly because the nesting sites are taken. The Indian miners are an aggressive bird, and they can, and they will chase off the other birds from from nesting around them. So that's actually really interesting that the two are nesting in the same tree. I don't know, but I'm 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 more, you know, I didn't I just noticed that. How cool is that? We have a lorikeet right there. Can you see him? It's a bit hard to see. But, but he's there. Give us a scratch, look at that. He's a bit itchy there. And what happens is Indian miners like groups. They like flocks. They like... And they like to harass the birds in their flocks until they vacate the area. Oh look, both of them are sticking their head out. That lorikeet's nesting in a hollow, and the both parents are there. Yeah. See, look at that lorikeet. A bear. When they find a bait or a pair. They pair for a very long time, and this pair can even, you know, can even last for life. But they do pair for a very long time, if not for life. So, um, it's very, it's really interesting. We've got a pair that's probably nested in the same hollow for a long time. There's our Indian miner. You know, that, that hollow right there could have been a place or a nesting site for a rosella or a lorikeet or, you know, another, another parrot or an Australian native bird. But unfortunately, we have this little tacker in there. Bugger. Oh well. Um, this is why we need forms of control for pests. But, anyway. At least we have our lorikeets. <laughs>